There was always a mystique surrounding Ayrton Senna. In his superhuman skill in the cockpit, his uncompromising single-mindedness and his ruthless will to win, there was an otherworldliness about him which has only been increased by his tragic death in 1994 at the peak of his career. We are made of emotions. We are all looking for emotions, basically. It's only a question of finding the way to, to experience them. Born of wealthy parents, he was given his first kart at four years old, and soon he was racing, winning, and relentlessly developing his skills. I never forget my first race in the wet with go kart was a disaster. Just complete joke. I couldn't do any good, and uh, people were going here, going there, passing me, overtaking me, and I couldn't do anything about it. And in the dry, I was pretty good. So then, on that day, I learned that I knew nothing about running the wet and then I learned. By the time he'd moved to Britain those skills were clear to see and he won a string of single-seater championships. In 1984 he moved to Formula One with Tolman and was stunning in the wet at Monaco. Had the race not been stopped he could have won it. And Senna challenging for that second place and he's taken it. A magnificent bit of driving by Senna, who's now in second place. Lotus signed him for 1985, and his first victory, in torrential conditions again, came in Portugal. It was the first Lotus win since Colin Chapman's death three years earlier. Out goes the chequered flag, and Senna has won. Look at him, both hands waving with joy. In 1988, Senna joined Ron Dennis's McLaren team as joint number one with McLaren fixture Alain Prost and wasted no time in trying to establish his superiority. There was no love lost between the Brazilian and the Frenchman and the battles between the two of them were sometimes too close for comfort. Senna Prost having a look and Senna's crowding him into the pit wall. That season was a McLaren whitewash, dominated by the two of them. And with eight wins to Prost seven, Senna clinched the championship in Japan. Ayrton Senna crosses the line and you can see his exultation. He knows he is the world champion. And of course, this happened at Suzuka 89. This is the opportunity that Senna's looking for and he's going through. Out! Oh my goodness, this is fantastic! Alain got out, but Senna stayed in the car, restarted and won the race, only to be disqualified. Prost was champion, but moved on to Ferrari. Back at Suzuka, 12 months on, the championship rivals started side by side on the front row. Prost got into the lead before turn one, and it was impossible to avoid the conclusion that Senna simply drove him off the road. And 12 months later, Senna, already champion again, moved aside to give his teammate Gerhard Berger the victory. At Monaco, he was almost unbeatable. At a given day, a given circumstance, you think you have a limit. And you then go for this limit and you touch this limit and you think, OK, this is the limit. As soon as you touch this limit, something happens and you suddenly can go a little bit further. With your mind power, your determination, your instinct, and the experience as well, you can fly very high. Ayrton won at Monte Carlo six times in seven years, but one of his most miraculous races was at Donington in 1993. This was lap one. 76 lap, European Grand Prix. Cross gets away well, so does Hill, so does Schumacher, and Wendlinger is coming up well, Senna is crowded out and is down to fifth position. Prost leads, Hill second, Wendlinger is third, and Ayrton Senna is up to fourth position ahead of Schumacher, and challenging Wendlinger as they go round the right-hander into the old hairpin, Senna is up to third. And after being crowded at the start, a quite brilliant couple of corners by Ayrton Senna. Tremendous stuff. He muscled his way back into the contention at Redgate. He's going inside Damon Hill. From fifth to second, but Ayrton hadn't finished yet. His arch rival Prost was still ahead. And Senna goes through into the lead. As ever in the wet, Senna was in a class of his own and he went on to win by almost a lap. 
At the end of the season, he left McLaren at last and signed for Williams. At Imola on the 1st of May 1994, he crashed fatally at the Tamburello corner. Shortly before his death, Senna had this to say about the risks of his racing life. One particular thing that Formula One can provide you is that you know you are always exposed to danger. Danger of getting hurt, danger of dying. This is part of your life, and you either face it in a, in a professional, in a cool manner, or you just drop it, you just leave it and don't do it anymore, really. And I happen to like too much what I do to, to just drop it. I can't drop it. For many, Ayrton Senna was the greatest driver of all time. His funeral brought Brazil to a standstill. Without doubt, he was a true superstar.